Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm sitting at home at my kitchen table with my National Trust passports in front of me. This is episode two of my National Trust passports. I'm going to tell you about my second National Trust passport. In the first video, we talked about my first one. I went through every property in it, all 28 of them. It's interesting actually because it used to be you had to get to 28 properties and now you have to get to 30. So somewhere upstairs I've got certificates and each time you get to you fill a passport up, you get a certificate and it gets interesting after three because you have to write to the National Trust and tell them. So um, you can see how the passport's evolved through the years. Um, we're gonna, this is episode two, coming will be three, four and five. Six isn't complete and this one is my girlfriend's passport. So um, I won't do that one, but I just got it here so you can see the variety and the evolution of passports. So my second National Trust passport, let's have a look where did I visit? Um, the first one took us from 1989 up until 1996, so here we are in the 90s. Um, now the last property I visited was Colbury Woodland Garden. Now the first one on that same holiday is Abadulais Falls. Now that is in South Wales, it's near Neath in South Wales. Neath is a fairly large town. And this is quite a different property. It's a hydroelectric, hydroelectric power station. Um, and I didn't really understand about what a hydroelectric power station was back in 1996, but I was just fascinated by, um, you know, the waterfalls. They, they were, you know, pretty impressive. And I did visit again um, a few years later, and to my delight, they had a model railway exhibition on. I've got three sisters, they weren't best pleased, because they, they said, we don't want to do any more train stuff. But yeah, there was a model railway exhibition there. So, Abbott's Elias Falls is well worth a visit. You can also visit Neath Abbey if you're in the area. Next property is Blickling Hall. So Blickling Hall is a lovely big house in Norfolk. Um, it's got some very nice formal gardens out the back um, and out the front actually. It's, I don't remember too much but I, I just remember being there. Um, impressive property really. It had some interesting, I seem to think it had some giant glasses, some sculptures in the grounds. Now whether that was just an exhibition that was there once or whether it was always there, I don't know. I've not been back to Blickling Hall since. I have been um, to Norfolk since, I just haven't got around to visiting Blickling Hall. So if anyone knows, are the giant glasses still at Blickling Hall? Do comment and tell me. I'd love to hear from you. Next property, Felbrick Hall. Also in Norfolk, visited on the same holiday. Now Felbrick Hall, I remember doing a big estate walk there and I remember they had, there was a fair on and there was a Lancaster bomber was flying around so although not actually the National Trust, that is my main memory from there. And then on the way back from that holiday, we visited Anglesey Abbey. So I talked a bit in the last one about abbeys that have become National Trust properties, we mentioned um, Buckland Abbey in Devon and Laycock Abbey in Wiltshire, so this is Anglesey Abbey. I don't remember too much, I remember walking around the grounds and walking up to a big white weatherboarded water mill which is you know, the typical sort of water mill you find in East Anglia. So that's Anglesey Abbey. And like I was saying in the last video, I should go back to all of these again. Some I have done Henry's Adventures at, um, but not that many of them, but I should, it'd be great if I could just go around them all again and make a video at every single one, um, you know, because it's they're all really nice places and also different. That's it's a bit like with miniature railways. I'm, I visit every miniature railway because each miniature railway is different. Each national trust property is different. So next one, bringing on to the national trust shop at Ashridge. Now this wasn't actually my first visit. My first visit was on a school visit. So we went to Ashridge with the school and I remember going there and I remember walking around, I could see a bridge in the distance. I just remember saying to the teacher, please can we go over that bridge? Please can we go a bit further, go over the bridge? And it was, no, no, we're doing this. You know, so I was a bit disappointed, but went back again with my family. Also the other thing that was much more exciting was we went up the Bridgewater Monument. If you ever get a train on the West Coast Main Line out of London, just as you're coming to Tring, if you look out on your left up at the Chilterns, you'll just catch a glimpse of the Bridgewater Monument. Um, from the Bridge and Water Monument, get a good view of the West Coast Main Line. Next one is, um, so is Nightshade's Court. 
which is down in Devon. It's a big Victorian house. It's got lovely grounds. Um, I remember going on a very hot day. We'd been to Westwood Ho on holiday for a week and we went there on our way back. So I just remember walking around the grounds in the hot weather, really, at, at Nightshade's Court. Next one is Stourhead. Now that was the next year, and that was actually, we liked it so much at Westwood Ho in North Devon that we went back again the next May, and we visited Stourhead on the way, and Stourhead is it's brilliant, and um, you've got a big estate with lots of temples around the lake, you can do a lovely walk, there was an amazing grotto, you know, a bit like I said with Stowe, probably one Henry's Adventures video wouldn't be enough, I'd have to do a few. Interestingly, you start ahead, it's the only one, as far as I'm aware, that has two passports. There's another one from the house. So on a later holiday, we, we did the house. So really, you do need two visits to go there. So the first visit, we did just to grounds. The second visit, I'll get onto it. It might be the next passport. It was a day it rained, we went to the house. So I'll get onto that later on. Then, next one ends in London. This must be the first National Trust property I went to in Greater London. It's called Ham House. It's in Richmond, it's a lovely big house. Out the back, it's so immaculate, like a doll's house. And it's got some lovely formal gardens out the back. It's not a huge estate, as you might imagine, it is in suburban London, but you know, it's like I say with all of them, they are all well worth a visit. The next one is Powys Castle, home of Clive of India. It is possibly one of the most impressive looking properties. So you've got the castle up on the hill and the gardens are garroted going down and um, it's just amazing really. It is, it's possibly one of the most impressive National Trust properties I've been to. And um, Clive India who lived there had a Britannia steam locomotive named after him. Um, the number of it has slipped out of my head but it's coming on screen now. So that is the Britannia locomotive Clive India named after the gentleman who lived at Powys Castle. From one um, very famous gentleman to another. We go to Chartwell, home of Winston Churchill. Funny enough, another steam locomotive isn't, was named after Winston Churchill, Bullet Pacific, number 34051, Winston Churchill, which is now in the National Rail Museum. The locomotive called Winston Churchill's funeral train. So Chartwell, I remember going to distinct, quite distinctly. It's a fascinating property, really can see into the life of Winston Churchill. I remember there being some ponds with some big koi carp and I was thinking, I can just imagine Winston sitting there, you know, feeding his fish. And he used to paint as well. So he used to paint places, you know, within his grounds. So Chartwell down in Kent, fascinating property. Do go and visit. Now, staying down in Kent, the next few couple are on that holiday, Stoneacre. Stoneacre is an interesting one. Quite a small one. From what I remember, it was a Tudor house with a garden, not a huge place, um, but it was quite fascinating. Now, some of the smaller properties don't have a stamp. Now, as you can see, it's not the official stamp. Um, some don't have an official stamp, but I, I just say to them, I say, if they say oh, we don't have the square stamp, I say, look, if you've just got something in the desk, just a stamp, if it just says Stoneacre or wherever it happens to be like that, I'm happy. I just want something in it. Now, on that holiday, we did also visit a property called Owlets, which unfortunately had nothing, so there's no stamp for Owlets, um, so that's not in there. We wanted to go to one called St John's Jerusalem, that wasn't open, I've not yet had a chance to go there, but it's meant to be um, impressive. And then on the way back, we went to Emmett's Garden. Now, that this was the time of the foot and mouth outbreak, talking of one, one pandemic, talking of another pandemic, but one that didn't affect humans directly, foot and mouth affected animals. The National Trust lost a lot of money, the YHA lost a lot of money, it was, you know, a pretty bad time. That day we attempted to go to Item Mo, it was closed. We attempted to go to Knoll, it was closed. We ended up at Ennett's Garden. Um, so bearing in mind that was before the internet, so we didn't have the internet to just look up. Now we probably wouldn't be turning up at these properties and not being able to get in because we'd just simply look up on the internet. But in 2001 we didn't have the internet. So we went to Emmett's Garden and um, I don't remember there being a house there. Whether there is and it's not um, open to the public, I'm not entirely sure. But it was a lovely garden, quite wooded in some respects. There were some nice little ponds I always like water gardens. So yeah, very interesting place. The next one is um, Mottisfont Abbey. 
Now that is down in Hampshire. Um, I remember going there on the way to a holiday down at the Isle of Portland. Fascinating property. I remember, one thing I'd remember, there was the river which flo flows through the site. My, oh, I'm, I can't think of the name, but um, name's on screen now, the river that flows from Ottawa Abbey, but there was a tributary of that river that started and finished within the ground, so we actually walked the whole of a river. And I remember there was really big wild fish. It was fascinating property. And um, there was a room of tromploids, which I was the first, I'd heard of tromploids, but it's the first time I'd ever seen them. So I was really quite fascinated by that. The next property well, is Petworth. Now Petworth is down in Sussex. The house is a bit like an art gallery, really. There's just so many fascinating paintings. We didn't do the wider estate walk, we did just the pleasure grounds. Now, um, I remember as we did the pleasure grounds, I noticed a tunnel under the pleasure grounds. Now, I was naturally, I was fascinated by it. Oh, and Dad said, no, no, you know, you're not supposed to go there. Anyway, when we got to um, near the end of the gardens, we were playing hide and seek. And I thought, right, now's my chance. So I ran all the way across the gardens. I got down into the tunnel and I walked all the way through it and back and then um, ran back across the pleasure grounds and hid, and it taken me quite a while to find me, but I, I got to see the tunnel. So um, the moral of the story is if I see a tunnel, I can't just really walk past it without having a look. I've got to be a bit nosy there. Next property, interesting one, it's Wakehurst Place. Again, it's not got an official stamp. Um, it's a bit of a funny one, this one, because it's, it's owned by the National Trust. It's actually managed by, um, I think it's the Botanical Gardens people. Um, I might be wrong on that one. I don't think it's RHS Royal Horticultural Society, but it's managed by somebody else, but it's owned by the National Trust. Um, and it was just a, a very big, fascinating gardens. I remember exploring it. It was, you know, I remember it, it did rain at one point. Um, not that that's really that relevant, but yeah, that's, I just remember us all having to get under a tree there. Now, next one is Chedworth Roman Villa in the Cotswolds. So this is quite a different one. It's not your big stately home. Well, I suppose it's a bit like a stately home, but it's a much earlier period. It's Chedworth Roman Villa, the ruins of the Roman Villa in the Cotswolds. So, yeah, again, well worth visiting. Um, again, it's not really relevant to Chedworth Roman Villa, but one, my one memory of it, it was, it was the first place I ever had Kendall Mint Cake. I remember buying it in the shop, not really knowing what it was. And, I was like, oh, this is really nice. And probably every time I've gone to a National Trust since then, National Trust shop since then, I've always bought Kendall Mint Cake, so that's where it started. Oh, now I've talked about Stourhead. This stamp is Stourhead House. So this was a day we were on the way to a holiday in the West Country. It was raining quite hard, but we stopped and we went around the house at Stourhead. So as far as I'm, on that, as I'm aware, Stourhead is the only property that has two stamps. If anyone knows, if you know that there's another property that has two stamps, do please comment and tell me. I'd love to know. Um, but as far as I'm, I'm aware, one thing I, do, I will say as well, some people cheat. Now, they, they get stamped every time they go somewhere. That's not how it works. You get it once on your first visit. So the idea is each stamp is a new visit. Hence why I said in the last video I didn't get any in 1996. No, 1997... 19, um, 2016 and funny enough 2020 um, so yeah you get it stamped the first time you're not supposed to keep getting it stamped because when you get your certificate saying you've been to 28 properties you haven't style heads a bit different because it's two properties within one but yeah you're not supposed to get stamped each time anyway now we move on to a greater london one osterley park Lovely place, but very close to Heathrow Airport. But you know, don't let the aeroplane noise spoil it for you. It's a lovely estate. Um, when, when you're actually walking around the estate, you really wouldn't know. You know, you're in the middle of a densely populated part of West London, and it has still has that lovely rural feeling to it. And here we have two more in London. We have Two Willow Road. Now, Two Willow Road is quite a fascinating property. It's up on Hampstead Heath. It was the home of the architect Erno Goldfinger. It's a, a terrace of three. Now he had the big one in the middle and there's one each side. It's a um, fascinating Art Deco house. Um, I, I really enjoyed looking around it. Um, you know, you, you, it's, it's like no other. Now on the same day, it's quite a good, this is, is a good little outing you can do. Go to one, 
That's two in a row, because just up the road in Hampstead, less than a mile away, is Fenton House. Now Fenton House um, have been to again more recently, and there's a link on screen now of me exploring the gardens at Fenton House. It's a um, fascinating property. It's basically a, a miniature stately home. Um, got some lovely gardens out the back. So, you know, do get, get on the train, go on the Northern Line up to Hampstead or get around the overground to Hampstead Heath and, you know, go and visit these. And you can go for a big wide walk up onto Hampstead Heath, maybe go to Parliament Hill, see the views over London. If you really want to do a lot, go to Kenwood House, which is English Heritage. I wish English Heritage did these passports. I could have probably filled a couple of them up as well. Oh, now this one is, has a rather sad story since I went. It's Clandon Park. Unfortunately, Clandon Park has since burnt down. Um, I believe there is some restoration taking place, but at least I did go before the fight. It was a real shame. But, you know, the gardens wouldn't have changed, but the house, unfortunately, now is just a shell. I think that's one of the saddest things probably to ever happen to the National Trust. I've not been there, but I know our park house, um, that did burn down and it was restored. So, you know, let's hope a similar thing happens for Clanton. The ones I have to go to our park and get up our stamp. Now, next one, staying in Surrey, is that June Wharf. That's in Guildford on the Riverway Navigation. So I remember going for a boat ride there. Um, and I remember there was a railway viaduct over the site, so trains on the line from Guildford over to Effingham Junction, so it was only class 455s all day, that was the only trains we saw, but I just remember being quite excited to see a few trains there, so yeah, that June Wharf in Guildford's worth a visit. Now, yeah, where's our next one? Melford Hall, that's in Suffolk. Um, in the village of Long Melford. Don't remember too much, but it was a smaller property. We weren't there all day. We went there, had a look around the house, had a look around the gardens. I remember there being a dummy window, as in there was a, to keep the symmetry of the house. I remember noticing that some of the windows weren't actual windows. They were just dummy windows on the outside, and they were just a wall painted to look like a window. Then the next one was Lavenham Guildhall. It's a famous, quite famous Guildhall, completely Tudor in the town, in the historic town of Lavenham in Suffolk. So this is another little day out you can do two in one day. And then staying in East Anglia, all done on the same holiday, Sutton Hoo. Now Sutton Hoo is quite well known. It's where a Viking longboat was found. Fascinating place to go for a walk. Um, so I remember going to Sutton Hoo quite distinctly. And then the next one is, um, don't remember too much about it. It's called the Elizabethan House Museum. It's in Great Yarmouth. It, it, it's a, a um, wouldn't like to say, well, no, it's obvious which year. It's Elizabethan, of course. Um, so it's an Elizabethan house in Great Yarmouth. Um, you know, a townhouse. Um, no gardens or anything, but, you know, still interesting, worth a visit. Perhaps if you're in Great Yarmouth and it's raining, um, go and visit it. And then we've got one more from the same holiday in East Anglia, Horsey Wind Pump. I remember being like, oh, a windmill. And I was told, no, it's not a windmill, it's a wind pump. So it looks like a windmill to look at, but it's a wind pump. It was to pump water rather than grind corn. And then our final one in this property um, is another interesting one that's not, it's National Trust, but it's managed by English Heritage, it's Hales Abbey. So it's a ruined abbey in Gloucestershire, and it's, since then it's become much easier to visit because the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway has reopened Hales Abbey Holt, so perhaps we should go there at some point in the future, and maybe we'll go by train on the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway. So that's my second passport, um, one and two look the same, third one is a bit different, but I'll, we'll talk about this one in the next video. So hope you enjoyed um, that little story, my memories from when I was a child visiting National Trust places. Thank you very much for watching. Do look out for the third video. Do go and visit these National Trust places. Um, and you know, they're all so different and so exciting to visit. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Thank you very much. Goodbye.